So we're almost done with the Zeratul chapter, finally, and reach the point in the game where the story team just gives up and starts ramming the idea of saving Kerrigan down our throats. The last mission has Raynor seeing a vision of Zeratul seeing a vision that the Overmind had, you know, a vision within a vision, just like that one movie. And in it, this evil guy who may or may not be a Zelnaga wins and destroys everything, and the prophecy is revealed to say that Kerrigan was the key to preventing it. There was one among you who could have jeopardized my great plan. But in your recklessness, you mistook her for the true threat. You're a real wanker, you know that? To be fair, this mission is pretty fucking cool. You basically have to hold out for as long as possible, despite the fact that the Protoss Zerg hybrids will win, and there's achievements to be won depending on how many enemies you manage to take down with you. But as major members of the Protoss get knocked off one by one, this level starts feeling like a threat from Blizzard to the player. Accept the idea of Kerrigan's redemption, or we will kill all the characters you know and love. This is Hieron Artanis, commanding the Shield of Iron. Where the fuck have you been? Kerrigan. How could we have known? This is our fate. Should Kerrigan die, you may soon hold Kerrigan's fate in your hands. I know only that she must live. I don't think I get it. Maybe you should tell me again. She has to live. Oh, shut your fucking mouth, Raynor! The interesting part, though, is that even though this prophecy subplot is revealed to help justify Raynor's attempt to save Kerrigan later in the game, it's pretty much never mentioned then. Though admittedly, Zeratul only confided to him personally through a crazy vision quest, and the crew would be well within their rights to relieve him of command if he mentioned it at all, and put someone competent in charge. Like this guy? At this point, I'm late in mentioning that the campaign is open-ended, or more accurately, open-middled, and allows you a notable amount of freedom in letting you select the order in which you play the missions. This is pretty cool, because if you get tired doing, say, the artifact track, you can switch to something that's more exciting to you at the moment. There's also two missions mid-game where you're forced to make a major decision, and that decision affects what variant of the mission you perform. These are set up as if they're some of those oh-so-trendy moral dilemmas that are all over games nowadays, but the only thing it actually affects long-term is what units you unlock. Further muddying this moral dilemma angle, at the end of these variant missions, the game just assures you that you made the right choice either way. You're a good man, Jim Rayner. Take this mission involving Hansen, for instance. It turns out the new colony she's helped found has a Zerg infestation on it, and the Protoss have rolled in to burn the planet down. It seems like you're making a very difficult choice between doing the cold logical thing, which is wiping out your own kind to prevent the infestation from spreading, or giving into your empathy for your fellow humans and defending them from the Protoss. But get this, if you choose the former, you don't actually pull an Arthas and start killing your own kind. This entire city must be purged. How can you even consider that? There's got to be some other way. You actually defend the remaining humans from the infested. There is no non-feel-good option, because if instead you choose to fight the Protoss off, they go on about what an honor it is to battle with you. Then it shall be an honor to meet you on the field of battle. Your reputation as a commander is most impressive. I trust you will live up to it. So you don't have to worry about the ramifications of the raiders pissing off the only friends they had in a more advanced alien species. You are as cunning as the stories say, James Raynor. I hope your belief in these colonists will be vindicated. Oh yeah, no big deal. What's the destruction of a mothership, half a fleet, and the deaths of hundreds between friends? There are probably marines and zealots on the field of battle who haven't even bled out yet, and Raynor and Selendus are already slapping each other on the back and saying it's water under the bridge. Oh, Hansen, what do you see in this man? Oh, and speaking of Hansen, the endings are vastly different depending on which mission you choose. If you wipe out the whole colony, it turns out she's been infested all along, but if you choose to defend the colonists from the Protoss, she turns out to be just fine. The continuity actually changes to make sure you feel good about whatever choice you made. Just do whatever, assholes. It'll all work out in the end. I guess the other mission involving the Spectres has a little more ambiguity, what with Nova making a plausible case that... Wait. Why is Nova in this fucking game? Are you fucking trolling me, Blizzard? Years of teasing and changing focus and development teams, only for us to see StarCraft Ghost get fucking shit-canned? And you think you can have psychic assassin Barbie show up like nothing happened? Fucking die in a warehouse full of dicks on fire! You see what I'm talking about with Blizzard just yanking their fans around? This is a god-tier dick punch. It's just, it's, it's not that unfair to ask for a little fucking respect, you know? 
Blizzard knows how crazy people get about their games. They used to cram their stuff full of story and lore. And while it wasn't high art, people loved it all the same. Obviously, they irrevocably and irredeemably threw consistency out of the window with the whole reveal earlier that the Zerg just wanted a hug this whole time. But on top of all this schlock, they had to utterly scrap the motivation and characterization of the principal players as well. Which brings us to Raynor and Kerrigan. 